Hi, um, this is James Setterberg from Elevation Tax. Just want to go over the rental property organizer, which for this year we've moved over into Excel. <clears throat> We're hoping that this will um, make the collection of information a bit easier for you as well as um, on our end. And so um, I want to spend the next few minutes going over this. Um, just giving brief instructions of what is needed in each section and um, basically um, kind of what other documents you'll need to send us. So let's start there first right here on the general information screen. Um, right here, here's kind of what we need generally for um, to do the taxes for your rental properties. First thing is um, this completed organizer, which I'll go over for a minute. We'll need a copy of the 1098 um, which is the mortgage interest for each property that has a loan on it. Um, Form 1099 for rental income, um, if you were issued one. You'll most likely be issued one if you used a property manager. Um, and again, if you did use a, a property manager, we'll need a copy of the annual property management statement. And then if you bought or sold a rental property during the year, the closing documents for that sale. Um, so let's go ahead and get on to the rental property organizer itself. On this first screen, we're just looking for some basic information. So this first little section here is just going over the entities. The holding company is going to be the one that we helped you set up in Wyoming. That's generally where most of them are going to be. So we just need the name, the EIN, and the date that it was organized with the state. And then below here, is going to be all of the subsidiary LLCs that hold the rental properties within each state. <clears throat> so just go ahead and put the same thing, just the name, the EIN, and the date of organization. And then <clears throat> the next step is to list all the bank accounts held by these entities. So you just put the name of the entity here the last four digits of the account, whether it's checking or savings, beginning balance of that account, ending balance of that account, and that's as of January 1st. This is as of December 31st. Same thing here with the credit cards. Um, last four entity that holds it, last four digits, beginning balance as of January 1st, ending balance December 31st. And then if you have any other loans, like PPP, EIDL, outside investor, just put a description here and then put the January 1 balance, December 31st balance here. Do not include mortgages because that's gonna be reported elsewhere. So here is where we, you'll list all the properties. Um, we've only listed, I think, space for about 20 here. So if there's any additional ones, um, just fill out a separate, uh, you can just make a copy of this <clears throat> organizer and start over again at the top. Um, but we just need the basic information for it. The street name, city, state, zip code, the entity that owns the property. So that should tie out to one of these entities over here. And then um, the beginning balance of the mortgage and the ending mortgage balance. Um, if the Entity has not been quit claimed over into an LLC. You can just put something like personally owned or something along those lines right there. And so this um, is gonna, this information is gonna flow over to this next, next section here, which is the um, financial statements. So we'll only go over one um, here uh, as this is just duplicated for everything. Um, but this will populate here, this section up here with the address you put in. So the next step we need to do is you need to complete what type of property this is, whether it's a single family home, a multi-family home, it's a vacation home like Airbnb, Verbo, um, land, commercial, a self-rental or an other. And if it's an other, just describe here. Um, here you'll put in, if you use a property manager for this, just put yes or no. Number of days um, this property was available for rent. This doesn't necessarily mean the days that it was rented out. It just means the days it was available for rent. So you can include here times where it was available for rent, but no one was occupying the property. 
um, number of personal days you put here, um, number of days vacant you put here, and then these are more for the short-term rentals, or this is for the short-term rentals, like the ones through Airbnb or Verbo. We need to know the number of days or average number of days per tenant was in the home during the year. Um, so you just will put that number here. The next is pretty self-explanatory of, you know, the I income and expenses that you'll put. Um, so here's where you'll put the income. Um, and here's all of the expenses um, listed here. You'll just put the total amount here in these fields here. If there's any other expenses that you need to include, you'll put a description and the amount here. The only thing I'll spend some time on here is just is talking about the difference between um, repairs and improvements. And here's some details right here. But <laughs> repairs are typically things that are, are, are minor. You know, things like if you're, um, or like, like painting or well, some other examples I give here, um, you know, just like fixing some minor stuff, um, and all, all those types of things. Improvements are, are like kind of major changes. Like if you're replacing cabinets or replacing the carpet or replacing fixtures or appliances, things like that, that's what be listed in improvements. Repairs can be deducted, um, whereas improvements have to be what's known as, as capitalized. Um, they're basically part of your structure, of your asset, and they have to be depreciated. And more details about the improvements would be going on this tab here, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but the repairs can be immediately deducted. Kind of my typical rule of thumb is, you know, it, this isn't like a barometer of, you know, once it's above this amount, it has to be capitalized. But typically, if you've got repairs that are, you know, exceeding like $2,500, you're probably going to be looking at, you have to capitalize some of that. But typically, if your total repairs are like underneath $2,500, you're, you're probably fine just expensing all of it. Um, but if you have more questions about this, please feel free to reach out to us. But that's some general guidelines on repairs and improvements. So you'll just need to fill that out for each property that you had during the year. Um, uh, but you can just use the guidelines I gave you on this one. And that obviously applies to all the rest of them. Um, so let's go to the final, um, uh, final section here. And this is the improvements. Again, this section up here with the street, city, state, zip will automatically flow over. So you'll just need to um, fill this section out. This is the only applicable section. Um, so you'll just need to put a description of what it is of what the improvement was. So if it was like a carpet or you bought a fridge or got a new couch or you replaced the kitchen cabinet, something like that, that's what you would put in the description. You would put the date. It was more or less should be the date completed, especially if it's a kind of a project you're working on with the uh, with the, the improvement. Um, so you'd put the uh, date there that it was completed, um, its cost, whether it's used or new, and that would be about it. And then if you ever sold anything, like you sold a couch, sold um, some furniture, whatever it may have been, again, put a description here, put the date it was sold and the sales price there. Um, and again, you'll just need to do that for each property. If there was any improvements or anything like that, don't worry about putting anything related to the sale or purchase of a home as the closing documents will be sending, you'll be sending over, will contain all the information we need on that. So, um, that's, that's everything that we need, um, with, in terms of the rental property organizer. Uh, once you get that submitted with all the other documents, um, we'll be able to get working on the return. Thank you.